In this presentation, we will take a look at Project Reports. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our job costing company dashboard. We want to be considering our reports now. So let's take a look at our reports and our projects. So there's two kinds of reports, so the main two reports. Let's go into the accounting drop down in order to see them. Accounting drop down, we're going to take a look at the reports. We're going to scroll on down to the bottom of the report section on the right hand side, typically, unless you, you know the screen changes when the, you change the size of the screen, but it's down here under projects where we have the detailed time. These are going to be the, t the two main reports that we will be considering, however, that being the project detail report and the project summary report. Let's go ahead and open up the project detail report. So we'll open up the project detail. Now we have the status up top. So we have the status so we could see them all reports or we could see the ones that are in draft forms, the ones in progress or closed. This is a great function. This is a great feature to be able to filter be between these items. So right now they're all in progress. So I'm just going to choose all because they're all in progress. We will have a closed report later and we can do some toggling be between these types of reports. We only have the beginning balances in at this point, you'll recall. Now this is the current date that that is in as of right now when I'm recording. And so I'm going to record it as of today. So we're keeping it as of today. I'm going to update it. Now, and you'll note that it'll then populate down here for job number 14 and job number 15, and it'll give us the, the detail for the reports thus far, which has just been what has been uh, created from these two expense type of forms that we put into place. Now, what I want to point out up here is this date field is a little bit strange to me. It makes sense, but it's a little bit strange. Notice that this is basically as of a point in time. There's not a, a range that we see right here. It's just got one uh, date field. So you can think of that kind of like a balance sheet field. The other thing that's a little bit unusual to me is that uh, this date field is picking up the information as of the data input point and not as of the point that um, we actually entered the expense as of. So in other words, if I was to change this date to the prior date, 2000, uh, to, to the 5th of 2020 and say, okay, then it's not going to show any data. So it's showing the data as of when we put it into the system as opposed to the expense data. Now that's, it still uh, works because what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this out to 2000 or the 6th again so we can see the data. So this basically means that this is as of that point in time. And then what I would do on this report is add the dates. So what I would do is go to the report settings over here and I'd like to see the dates. So this one is by default not checked off. I think it's a really useful one to have. So I'm going to check that off and then I'm going to say update the report. Now when you look at the report, it has a date field, and the date field is pulling this information in not as of the time that I added it, but as of the point in time that the expense was recorded. In other words, we made the expense document uh, at, as of December 30th in this case, and that's when it put it into the system. So, so the date field is nice. Now if I wanted to filter this report to just show 2019 or 2020, then I'm not going to use this date range as a filter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the reports here and then filter this information down below. So we'll go into the add filter and I'm going to filter it by date. So I can filter it then by date. And now I can create a range and this date range is going by when the expense was input into the system. In other words, if I went, if I took this back to 2019 and said for the month of December 2019, and it was entered in there at the end of 2019 and say uh, December 1st through the 31st of 2019 I wanted. So let's bring this back to 2019. All right, so that it's just December 2019. Then I'm going to say OK. And the data down here is still populated. So that's what we want to see. What if I just want to see the information for uh, after or the current period which will be 2020 nothing's in there yet and then I can go to the reports down here and I can change the date if I was to change this up to 2020 so January 1st uh, 2020 to anywhere else in January let's make it uh, the 31st of 2020 and then update this report uh, there's nothing in it at that point in time 
So that's a little bit tricky, but it works fine. Just re realize that this date range is going to be the date range. It's currently the date range as of when the, when the information was input into the system. Let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail to see how the mechanics of this works. If I go back up top, I'm going to duplicate this tab. I'm going to right click on this tab. I'm going to duplicate this tab. So we're going to have the report to the right. Then we're going to go back on to the left. And let's go into the projects to kind of see how they're constructed here. So if we go into the projects, I'm going to go to all projects. We'll go into number 15 here. So we'll go into project number 15. And if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see these, these items that were added. And you can see this item that says assigned. And this was created from the expense form or the, uh, the money out form, the spend money form that we had. If you go to the three dots to the right and we, and we take a look at uh, what is included in here, we can edit this information and you can see what has been created. Basically, we had edited or created and edit assign expense. So the assign expense, you could create one of these from scratch. This one was created from the document that we created, which was like the money out form, the expense type form. So it went to the cement. You could see we don't have an, we don't have any expense. We might uh, go into the expense in more detail later. Quantity, the unit price, and then the markup. If we were to um, to, to mark up for for the invoicing when we invoice these items, and then we have uh, the percentage. So that's the three thousand. Notice what's not here is the date, and you can see that we entered this. I entered this. We we made this form basically as of today which which in in my case is march <laughs> let's check this out march 6th right and so when we when we run our report over here this date is basically running as of when the thing was made not when the form was put into place that's why that date is a little bit little bit unusual i would have this date as of the end date and again use those ranges to to be able to filter the dates then if i go back to the tab to the left and we select these three dots again and if I say, hey, I want to go to the item that was basically used to create this, then we're going to we're going to open up that spend money form. So here's the spend money form. You can see the date on the spend money form was December 31st. So the date here was December 31st. Uh, and, and it still seems to be pulling into when we created that expense item as of the point in time that we made this, not the point in time that the date was in place. However, if you use the report filters, then you could still filter the dates uh, dates correctly. So that's kind of how uh, the mechanics of this thing is, is working. And it works well, but it's just useful to note that the connection between this spend money form and, uh, and what it's going to look like when you get back to the projects over here. And if I go into the all projects once again, and then into project or customer uh, project or, or job number 15. So that's how these are going to be uh, applied. So this item is assigned through the form that we created just note that you can do that up top as well you could say add and we can add um, an estimated exp or an estimated expense or an actual expense so here's the expense and you can see this is the same form we're not going to add one here but this is the same form that's basically being created by the money out type of form that's being used to, to populate our expenses and generate our reports now the other report, if we go to the accounting dropdown and we go to the reports up top, and if we look at the other report, the summary report, so we'll go down here and we'll take a look at uh, the project summary. That'll give us a, a quick recap of, of the information of the projects. And you can see the recap in the projects area as well, but this one gives us a nice little toggle between the jobs that are all jobs and then the, the jobs that are drafts and the jobs that are in progress we can do a nice toggle between those items and we also have the other columns including the total invoiced column and the percentage column and these can be useful we'll talk about invoicing at the end of this process we're going to be concentrating in on the costs first that's just a recap of kind of like the mechanics of the reports and the projects. We will, of course, be jumping back and forth between the projects as we go, as we add data to the current period, the 2020 period. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.